Hi, this is Gary, KN4AQ, and this is the RARS 1991 Review. From across the heart of Carolina, this is WTBD 11 News. Tonight, the Soviet Union is in turmoil. That after Red Army troops stormed the Lithuanian Republic's broadcast station, killing at least 13 people and injuring at least 130. Protesters were shot by soldiers or crushed by tanks. Meanwhile, concern about the situation is growing in this country. The thoughts and prayers of the people of the United States are with them, and particularly with the Lithuanian people who have experienced a great tragedy. Getting information out of the Baltic states has been, at best, difficult throughout the weekend. But amateur radio operators like Jim Dubrek have been able to keep up with developments as they happen, even as the Associated Press and United Press International were reporting that eight people had died in a military siege at a TV station. Dubrek called WTVD to let us know that at least 13 people had been killed. So it appears as though uh, monitoring this station at the Parliament building in uh, Lithuania is the most uh, efficient means and certainly the most accurate means of getting information directly out of Lithuania right now. We've only now been able to get these pictures of Red Army soldiers beating Lithuanian people Saturday. But Dubrek knew of the violence as it happened. Perhaps that is why even the government is now turning to amateur radio operators for information. The United States State Department asked to have a direct telephone link with amateur radio operators. Uh, here in the United States, and in fact, uh, effective about 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time last night, uh, the U.S. State Department was monitoring amateur radio transmissions out of Lithuania by means of uh, uh, ham, hams in the United States. And again, it appears to be a reliable uh, means of communication as opposed to the satellite transmissions, which are being interrupted, we understand. Lithuanian-American leaders are urging immediate sanctions to punish the Soviet Union for this violence. President Bush and European leaders have condemned the crackdown. And here's a look behind the scenes as WTVD prepared their story. It's often impossible to get a news crew on the scene when ham radio is tracking an interesting story. If you tape record the activity you hear, a TV station can use the tape to make their story more interesting. In February, RARS cooperated with the Boy Scouts to put on an amateur radio demonstration at the Cary Village Mall, now the Cary Town Center. N4IQA and NA4G brought just a few pieces from their antique radio collection. Including a working spark gap transmitter. The demonstration also included operating stations on HF, VHF, and Packet. And hey, that's my call sign. Every other month, and at several ham fests, Vince, AA4MY, and the RARS volunteer examiners tested dozens of new and upgrading hams. And in the spring and fall, Bob, N4VQN, and his instructor corps provided the VEs with a lot of people to test. Over 40 new hams graduated from the spring class, and over 20 graduated from the fall class. RARS encourages learning Morse code and going straight for the tech license, bypassing the novice license.
Near the end of each class, RARS members present Tune in the World Night. We demonstrate radios and accessories and answer questions, giving new hams a close-up look at the real world of amateur radio. So I've got an HT with an external speaker and an external mic. Makes a great base station. The high frequency radio you see here is a Kenwood and it's um, it's two models back, so I got it at a pretty good price and it's, I paid far more than I should. But uh, I had just given up flying little airplanes and I found out that ham radio was cheaper and I don't have to take a physical exam. That's why I started doing that. This is a Kenwood solid state HF radio. It covers all the bands on the HF from the lowest one possible, 160 meters, to 10 meters. The packet radio uses something called a terminal node controller, or TNC. In this particular case, I have a, it's just a, a standard AT, AT clone, and inside I have a, a, a board, which is called a TNC, or terminal node controller. A little device for running CW, right? What's nice about this is it's got, shut up. It's got four memories built into it. I got a uh, noise bridge. Now, a noise bridge, you can measure the impedance of an antenna and the, the resistance and reactance and tell whether it's too long in, uh, or too short. In A4G, in 4 aq 8 Hello, hello, hello? <laughs> Don't you hear me, Bob? No, I can't hear you. Where are you? What do you want? Two meters? Yeah, I'm on two meters. Oh, I'm sorry. This is meant for the middle of the 80 meter novice band. No wonder it doesn't work. This is two meters 50 years ago. <laughs> this is one from about 1935. And you see the design has come up a little bit. It's got a lot of pretty dials and knobs on it. It's got a couple of tubes. But this is typical of what an amateur would have had about 1935. Again, homebrew construction, about 50 or 100 watts output, about the equivalent of the modern day transceiver. It may be costing back then a hundred or so dollars to build. After the demonstration, there was plenty of time for one-on-one -on -one questions and answers and hands-on operation. Snuck up on me. Welcome back, everybody. Donna Mason here. Well, I told you about Hamfest. You know, when the when these folks first contacted me and said, Donna, let's do a show on Hamfest, I thought, oh no, it's going to be about breakfast or about the pork producers, which is another topic altogether. But actually, it turns out that it's the Raleigh Amateur Radio Society's big ham fest coming up this weekend so we're going to tell you all about that my guest is jim dubrek who's the president of the raleigh amateur radio society endearingly referred to as rars isn't that the way you talk about it and it is it is indeed donna and good morning hi good to have you so tell me something what is amateur radio i get all confused with with ham radio with shortwave radio what's what's amateur radio amateur radio is exactly what i'm doing here jim i think <laughs> <laughs> i didn't want to say that no Amateur radio is exactly what you are doing. It is a means of communicating with other people via radio, but we don't use AM radio as you're using. We use sideband radio or other modes of communications on radio, but not for pay. It's a hobby. Okay, exactly like what I'm doing here. Well, in the time we have left, which is about a minute, let's go over this again. Ham Fest this Sunday. Take it, Jim. At uh, the Jim Graham building at NC State Fairgrounds. And you will see approximately 5,000 people from all over the East Coast coming to this ham fest. It's one of the larger ones in this part of the country. Thank you. I got a nice day. W4DW. Y'all, here it is. It's the first time I've had everybody's attention in the room. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the winner is ticket number 2205, Mr. John Moody from Apex. In March, Rars turned 21, and we threw ourselves a birthday party. Ed, WA4PEN, was the cameraman for the video from the party, and NA4G's wife, Linda, provided the entertainment. Well, 
Back in 1990, the 6-4 repeater antenna began to get noisy. Pete, W8DTD, donated a new antenna. And in May, a RARS crew gathered at the repeater site to install it. Here's a look at the repeaters at the site. The 6-4 repeater is on the left. And close up, the 6-4 power supply is on the bottom, then the receiver, the ACC control system, the old homebrew control system, and the transmitter. Back outside, Allen AB4OZ and Paul NO0T climb the tower. Haven't done this before, so I'm not sure. Now we're going to drop a wrench on you. See, us. See how long it takes to get there. And we hired KB4MDZ's company, Mobile Communications, to help us. They supplied hardware on the ground and another man on the tower. Somebody probably chucked it down at the building. The old antenna came down. Damn, it looks real close now. <laughs> <laughs> you get a picture of this. Our brave boys are up there on the tower right now, working their little uh, tails off. And you're down Good here. Good job, guys. You're down here eating pizza. Uh, how does that make you feel? You. Hungry. <laughs> Satisfied. And the new antenna went up. And up. Let's see dominoes do this. And it works good. Welcome to the W4DW repeater. NO0T, NO0T, this is AB4OZ. That's great, Paul. We just got down on the ground, and uh, you're the first contact. In June, the VHF-UHF SIG set up for the VHF contest on a farm near Wendell. How's the cooking going? Cooking's going fine. I got the baked beans taken off and put over there on the table. I got the chili oak to be put on there. I got the yard bird turned for the final time and coated. And I've got the uh, burgers put on, and they're ready for their first flip. Got to squat down and get a upper shot there. <laughs> Some real good video. N4 HB, November 4, Hotel Bravo, W4 DW. Uh, we're a Fox Mike 05, Fox Mike 05, QSL. Okay, W4 Delta Whiskey, November 4, Hotel Bravo, QSL. You're at Fox Mike 17, over. Roger, QSL, the Fox Mike 17. Thank you very much and uh, good luck. 73, thank you. This is a uh, ARRL grid locator map of North America. Raleigh, North Carolina is located right here at Fox Mike 05. Our furthest contact so far at the contest has been Central Pennsylvania, which is Fox November 11 right here. There you Thank go. you very much. Hey, so you're not allowed to take my picture unless I'm on top of a tower, not on the ground. I just don't feel right down here. Well, that's another story. That's mine. What we have over here is the voice box. This uh, device allows me to uh, put my own voice digitally into this uh, memory. QSL Fox Mary 05, thank you, and 73. 73. And I have eight different memories. These memories are very helpful when you're trying to send CQ a lot. Thank you, thank you, contact from Kilo Mary 5, that's right. 
Hello, Mary 5 X-Ray from W4DW, Whiskey 4 Delta Whiskey. Uh, QSL Echo Mary 1-2, Fox Mary 05, go. Thank you, Kilo Mary 5, X-ray, Corvette. Yeah, that's doing it the old way. Station masters who are going to be operating the station, let us see a show of hands. One, two, three, four, and there make five. We are 5 Alpha, North Carolina, QSL. CQ20, CQ20. I'm not getting out. CQ20. CQ20, CQ20, CQ20. This is NA4G, Nancy Alpha 4 Golf, calling CQ20 meters and standing by. Uh, Nancy Alpha 4 Golf, uh, try your report again, please. Uh, Roger. Nancy Alpha 4 Golf is 6 Alpha, 6 Alpha, North Carolina. RARS operates two separate field day groups. One group operates QRP, or low power, using batteries. That group is seriously contest oriented, and they finished in the top 20 nationally. We won our category, but then again, we were the only station in our category. Generator guys. Where's the, where's the battery? How come we can't just crank start this? This up? is full choke. Uh, <laughs> Next. He wanted to take a picture, he told me to turn it off! The other group operates higher power with generators. It's less competitive, but we still try hard. It's a good learning opportunity for new operators. All listeners, the band is dead. The band is dead. And this year, the RARS Crystals set up their own all-female station. CQ Field Day, CQ Field Day, CQ Field Day, CQ Field Day. This is Whiskey 4, Delta Whiskey, W4DW, calling, whis calling CQ Field Day. Kilowatt November 3, Charlie. Kilowatt November 3, Charlie. You have 4 Alpha, North Carolina. QSL to 4 Alpha, North Carolina. Please copy 1 Delta, Eastern TV, QSL. Eastern what? QSL to 1 Delta, Eastern Pennsylvania. Uh, call oh, is Kilo November 3, Charlie, is that correct? Roger, roger, you have it all correct. Thank you for the contact, USL. CQ Field Day, CQ Field Day, CQ Field Day. This is Whiskey 4, Delta Whiskey. Randy and Rick, what's your uh, favorite part of Field Day? Ooh, I really don't know. All of it. I love it all. Today we have the good fortune to begin break ground of the RAR shack. Uh, we're trying to build a 10 by 16 foot building for the storage of RAR's components, uh, antenna, gin poles, and, and various other kinds of things that we need to have stored. And what we're doing today is we're, we're taking and setting the holes that will be the foundation holes, and we're going to get it set up to four footers next week. And then at that point in time, we're ready to begin the, the actual construction. Uh, this, this will be a frame bu building, 10 by 16, uh, have an 8-foot ceiling on it uh, instead of the usual 5 or 6-foot ceiling that uh, most sheds have. And uh, it will be double strength in the floor and have a little storage space up in the ceiling for long poles, gin poles, and that kind of thing. So it's, it's kind of a custom-built shed uh, for the particular needs of RARS. This is a gauge that gives us the size of the footer. This is 24 inches square, so if this fits down in the hole correctly, then our footer will be 24 inches square, which meets the code. Well, I guess this isn't a code-free storage building. I uh, think it's too deep, Bob. Help well, me we'll out. see. Let's put the cap on. We'll have to cap it off a little bit. To get, to get the level and to get the ground clearance, you have to have certain ground clearance. And 
Maybe so. <laughs> yeah, it weighs 300 pounds. <laughs> I said there needs to be a disclaimer at the beginning of this film. Okay. If anyone we're thinks they would have done it different, they should have been here to do so. Otherwise, say it's beautiful and be quiet. Okay. Go ahead and dump. Right next okay. to you. Thank yeah, you. Just right there to your right. Okay. Here we go. Vertical. Ready. Vertical pole reverse. Okay. <laughs> Vertical pole. Okay, give us an inch overhang. Each October at the State Fair, RAR supplies dispatchers for the Red Cross. We fill three five-hour shifts for nine days. We operate radios on the Red Cross channel, and also on two EMS channels and the Department of Labor Ride Inspector channel, plus communications with the police department. Okay, you need to take part me. We don't know if we need a stretcher or sit up. We don't know how bad our problem is. Okay, let me let me go the usual route, evaluate and then transport. Okay. Now we'll take you on an emergency call and we'll see how our communication service helps out. The Red Cross has received a report that a pregnant woman has fainted. by the patient not to be transported back to Red Cross. She feels fine. We had her um, husband page. Has um, anybody answered that page yet? No, ma'am, nobody's answered the page yet. We are um, going to the Folks Festival as planned. Meet us, we'll be at, between the Scott Building and the Folks Festival. Yeah, I know. <laughs> this is the official RARS auction year uniform. This is the third year in which it has been worn. If you throw your hand up, you've just accepted whatever amount of money I'm going to pay you or you're going to pay us, depending on where we are in the bidding season. Think about that for a minute. So just write down the sheet, and we will ask those people not to. So we're going to start selling. What am I? $75 for an 80 meter transceiver. It's 80 meter sideband and CW, right? No AM. Okay. In excellent condition. $75. I got $100 from number 102. Can I have $105? 11 going once. 11 going twice. So, what do you want your number? In the fall, plans were begun for RAR's participation in Raleigh 200 the city's celebration of its bicentennial. The Raleigh 200 will go on all year, and our first event was planned for New Year's Eve, a special event station at the state capitol. To make it extra special, Walter AB4DQ, Kelly KD4EWG, and Jim N4BYO met with Raleigh Mayor Avery Upchurch to plan an address the mayor would make from the station. Mayor Upchurch agreed to the plan. There's, there's North Carolina morning and evening that, that goes on at the... 7.30 in the morning and uh, at the... 
In December, Woody, KJ4SO, built a new computer that would upgrade the RARS bulletin board. This is a new RARS bulletin board system computer. It's a 12 MHz 286 AT compatible computer with a megabyte of RAM and a 20 megabyte hard disk. Uh, looking on the inside of it, it's in a mini tower case. The cover's been removed from it right now. You've got a rat's nest of cables, wires, and circuit boards. Uh, this is going to be much more powerful than the system we had previously. It also has a 2400 baud modem. The system was partially funded by RARS, and the rest of it was funded by donations from various club members. Also in December, Jim, N4BYO, and his wife Mary Ann hosted over 140 RARS members and family at our Christmas party. Because Jill had asked me, says, what is his last name? And I said, I'm here. <laughs> okay. We're going to move some things back. Uh, we are going to start a long way. Okay, that's worse. That's, yeah. Of course, Santa Claus was there. Merry Christmas to you, too. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Not there. Was it TV Dave? Yeah. And so was the fire department. Also in December, Paul, NO0T, held an open house to show off the new DX packet cluster. The cluster's antenna sits on top of this aluminum jungle. And the cluster itself lives in a corner of Paul's shack. So it panned into Paul's back. Oh, oh, sorry. This is the data side. And this is the RF side. And this is the most recent addition, an uninterruptible power supply. Santa's coming around. Uh, CQ Santa Claus, CQ, CQ North Pole, CQ North Pole. Here is N4 BYO, November 4 Bravo Yankee Oscar looking for Santa Claus at the North Pole. Over. said yes. She's not, could you speak louder? Yes. Thank you for talking to me, Shauna. It was good to talk to you. put the band down already? Do you want to clip it to your jacket? Yeah, so everybody knows that you talk to Santa. Where are you going? Now everybody's going to know that you talk to Santa Claus on the radio. You have a good Christmas, okay? And the best way to tell Santa what you want for Christmas is to just dial direct. Wow, all right, Tom, thanks. Yes. You know, with Christmas coming next week, how would you like to pick up a two-way radio and talk directly to Santa Claus? Thanks to the Raleigh Amateur Radio Society, some local kids got to do just that this evening. We'll leave you tonight with the scene at Wake Medical Center as Santa beamed in from the North Pole. Looking for Santa Claus. KM4BU, ho, 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 this is Santa Claus. Hello, hello, Santa Claus. We have a very, very good copy on your signal now. Santa Claus, I have Dix here, and he'd like to say hello to you and tell you what he wants for Christmas. Go ahead. Hello. Hello, Dix. Hello, Santa Claus. This is a G5 RV dipole stretching between oak trees on the state capitol grounds. This is W4DW, a special event station in Raleigh, North Carolina, celebrating the 200th anniversary of the City of Oaks. Uh, anyone wishes to check in, call W4DW. <laughs> Golf 
zero kilo whiskey delta. Uh, this is W4DW. I did not get your ac actual location in, in Blighty over there, but uh, uh, that's good enough. Your, your signal is readable. It is not too strong. W4DW created pileups on HF all afternoon. At 5 o'clock, we switched to the repeater for the mayor's address. W4DW, W4DW calling a special session of the Raj to meet net. This net is called as a special se session this evening for an announcement from the Honorable ABC Upchurch, Mayor of the City of Raleigh. Uh, <coughs> there will be a roll call following the Mayor's announcement, and after the roll call, we will ask for comments. Uh, the, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the Mayor of Raleigh, the Honorable a ABC Upchurch. This is Avery Upchurch, the mayor of Raleigh, North Carolina. Greetings to all you hams out there tuned in this afternoon. Two centuries ago this year, a plan was set forth to build a capital city in the wilderness for the state of North Carolina. Today that city of Raleigh still lives and indeed prospers. We take this occasion to announce the beginning of a celebration of history and merriment in our city of the Oaks. Raleigh belongs to all North Carolinians as a symbol of our 200 years of history and heritage. Many of the very streets and public squares drawn by the original surveyor, William Christmas, still exist today. Yet we have witnessed incredible changes, the Civil War, a man taking the flight, all within the boundaries of our colony and state. Today I'm using Ham Amateur Radio to extend an invitation to you and all your citizens to join us in celebrating the 200th birthday of our city and your capital. We have planned an exciting year of activities and we would be privileged for you to join us in this historic commemoration. Best wishes to you this new year of 1992 and I hope we get to see you here in Raleigh during the coming year. Thank you Mr. Mayor. This is W4DW. Uh, we'll now accept check-ins and we'll check in an alphabetical order by a suffix. Stations Alpha Charlie, call W4DW. W4DW, Alpha Charlie, call W4DW. This is KA2FWC, Frank North Raleigh. Please check me in and out tonight. This is the Wonder Alpha 4 Doll. Check me in and out. And congratulations and a happy new year to the mayor on behalf of the celebration. W4DW. This is KD4DQI. Durham. Good afternoon, Walter and Mr. Mayor. W4DW. 45 stations checked in as Mayor Upchurch observed an excellent demonstration of amateur radio. Mike in Raleigh. No traffic. 